I'm going over uh, how I set up my uh, eBay for my uh, Mad Cow Torrent. Uh, of course, we've got uh, our eBay tube. Uh, I have marked the forward and the aft ends. And you want to make sure you do have your ends marked and everything's directional. Uh, my bulkheads I've mar also marked aft and forward. Uh, what we've mounted here is we've mounted a little uh, CPVC cup that comes with a kit from Apogee for your uh, dual deployment. It also has uh, some electronic connectors uh, for connecting your electrical. Uh, and a little screw in there, stainless steel screw for holding the cap in place. Uh, I'm opting to not cement it with e um, with epoxy. I'm going to go ahead and just use the screws that came with it. On the underside, you can see they're screwed there. Uh, I cinched them down fairly tight with nut drivers. Uh, so I'm not too worried about them coming loose. And then the hole for the uh, electrical wires, I actually put epoxy clay around to try and make it a little bit more airtight. Uh, we don't want our ejection gases getting into... Uh, the eBay itself and messing up the electronics. Uh, we can see here I've already put on one of the connectors that come with it. So a really neat connector. It's a snap connector. Basically, what you do is you uh, put your wire, just shove your wires in, no stripping necessary, and then crimp it down with a pair of pliers, and it's made your connection. You match it up on the other side to make sure everything's uh, hooked up right and properly. Um, so we sat there and laid this out to make sure that everything's going to be fine. If I had wing nuts, I might have moved this over more. Uh, I've got regular uh, square hex or hexagon nuts, so it wasn't an issue. Then on the sled itself, we sat and laid it out. Basically, I sat down and I pushed wires around and moved things around until I found out where everything would work and line up properly. Um, I've got, as you can see here, another set of holes I drilled. This is for another strap. This strap goes that way to hold the battery in place. It's not cinched down tight so I can't remove it. Uh, we hook up our battery on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect my other cap here. So you can see how that just connects nice and easy. Makes it getting me in and out of eBay real, real simple. So I laid everything out, put the battery in place, uh, Decided where to drill the holes to get a, another zip line over the top of that to keep the battery from sliding up and down. Uh, marked out where I was going to drill my holes for my circuitry board for the uh, RRC2 uh, computer I got from Missile Works. Uh, and then we got the uh, mounting kit, which came with all the wire, some straps, and a little electrical switch. Uh, and our cups and our electrical uh, connectors there. So basically we've got the battery hooked up and then the switch is wired in. Uh, I've got that hooked right here and then that's zip corded down to the board so it's not going to flop around. Um, and it, it's all set up with the drogue and the main and on the board you can see I've marked aft and main. I've got to put a little flag on here but my long one goes to my drogue. And you just always have to remember which way you need to put everything. So I've got this top part of the sled, nut it down tight so that I don't accidentally move it to uh, uh, the wrong end of the uh, rocket and try and deploy the main when I'm supposed to be deploying the drogue. So after everything's hooked up, you slide it inside your eBay and hook it up. Uh, we turn it on with a little push button. It does a long beep to let us know it turned on. It's going to give us our last altitude and then our battery voltage. Uh, it has no flight on it, so there's no altitude on it right now, so it's not going to give that. So that's 8 volts and 3 tenths. 8 and 3 tenths volts in the 9 volt battery. Again, we don't have a flight on the, the computer so it's not beeping out the uh, flight data. Normally we do the flight data, how high it went on the last flight, and then the battery voltage. Now it's beeping a long beep. One long beep means that it's done a continuity test on both uh, drogue and the main. And it's not detecting a crossover. I'm going to shut that off now. It's not detecting the uh, continuity test so it's saying that there's no um, 
deployment charges or igniters hooked into either one of them. So if I had an igniter in one, it'd give me a certain type of beep. If I had an igniter in both, it'd give me a different type of beep. <coughs> it's a real, real easy to use altimeter. You can change your beep tones with toggle one. Toggle uh, two tells us uh, drogue at zero or zero plus one second. So apogee plus one second. Let's say you're doing uh, the charge as a backup. So you'd be apogee plus one second. So if you hit apogee and continued past apogee, it would deploy the, the shoot for you as a fail safe. Then you can deploy the main at 300 or 800. And then you flip another switch and it goes an additional 200 feet to either 300 or 800. So 300 becomes 500, 800 becomes 1,000. So you've got four different preset altitudes no programming on a computer or anything. To me, this is a very, very simple system to use. So laying it out, laid everything out, drilled my holes, tapped my screws, put my standoffs in, a little bit of glue on the standoffs. Then I slide it in here, and I look through my airport, which is also how I'm turning it on and off, and I'm looking for that switch and once I find the switch, I'm like, okay, there's my switch. I did a couple little marks on the tube. Now I know where my alignment mark is. Now we connect our bottom. Line up our marks. And then snake this into there. And we slide it on and hook it up. And you can see it's got two marks also. And I look inside and I can still see my switch and everything. So we could turn around and put our nut on and everything else. Now I can turn it on. And we can hear it beeping. Running a self cycle right now. Now it's getting our battery test. How much voltage is in our battery? So, the way I'm going to actually test this out, there's multiple ways of testing out. Find one that you like. Uh, the way I'm going to test it out is I'm actually going to do this at a low altitude on my first launch. My certification launch is only going to go to, I'm going to turn this off again. I'll let it finish its cycle. There we go. Um, I'm going to actually do my certification launch and it's barely going to break 900 feet. I'm not too worried of a rocket this heavy at 900 feet opening a chute. I'm going to make sure it's not a windy day when I do it so I won't be chasing this thing down forever. Um, I am going to set it up just like I was going to do old deploy. I'm going to put my e-matches in but I'm not going to put in a powder charge. So the uh, black powder goes in the cup. Then your e-match I'm just going to grab an igniter, is hooked up into your terminals and bent over into the cup and you push that igniter tip, your e-match tip, into the powder. Make sure it's in the powder. Then you stuff wadding on top of it really, really tight. You want to make sure that it's not going to shift around. Then you tape it in place. Put some tape over the top of it, a couple pieces. Make sure it's not going to move around. Do the same thing for your forward end. Um, Connect your connectors, you know, slide it in your tube, connect your connectors. And remember, you're dealing with black powder. When you arm this, make sure your face is not pointed towards either end. Point them away from you. Warn people around you, I'm arming a black powder charge. And go ahead and do your arm and let it cycle. Do not turn it off and rearm it within 10 seconds. If you turn it off, let it sit for, let's say, a minute just to be safe because that capacitor has to discharge that power. And the most common occurrence that happens is somebody will turn on their altimeter, shut it off, and then turn it right back on and it'll trigger the charges. And people get hurt that way. So we don't want to do that. Just remember you're dealing with black powder charges. Once you've armed the system and have the charges in there, you want to make sure that that ends point away from you at all times. Make sure you don't have powder charge pointed towards your face or anybody else. So again, uh, going up on a 900 to 1,000 foot flight, it's going to deploy the main chute using the rocket motor. And at Apogee, it'll kick off my um, drogue 
igniter. So it's going to burn. It's not going to pop out or shoot anything because there's no powder, just the igniter. Then when it hits the 300-foot mark, it's going to blow the other igniter. When I get this rocket back, I can pop it open, look at both ends, and see that it has not blown or has blown the igniters. If it has, I know that everything is functioning properly. My uh, computer works great. But there are other ways to test it. Uh, again, we laid it out made sure everything's tight. We glued down our uh, nylon standoffs. We've sealed the holes that we drilled in the bulkhead uh, with uh, epoxy or epoxy clay so that we don't have more air leakage. And uh, we're all set to go and send this thing up. So uh, hopefully you'll be seeing a level one completion flight uh, on video pretty soon.